Welcome to Bear the Terrible. Today we're in a deck for the Midnight Geyser featuring the new Thievil from Astro Radiance with the baffling ability allowing you to prevent all effects of your opponent's supporter cards done to your bench V Pokemon if they have two or fewer prize cards remaining. So late stage in the game if they have knocked out two of your V Pokemons or if they killed two of your one prize and one V Pokemon, they're actually not allowed to boss any V cards on your bench. And that means we get to force them to hit Volcanion in the active spot, allowing us to retreat to our single strike Entei on the next turn, doing Angry Fang twice in a row while having our Volcanion protected on the bench for two turns straight right before the game ends. We we'll also have two copies of Obama Snow with the Toughness Boost ability and three Cap of Toughness that was raised Volcanion's HP up to 320 HP plus 20 more for each special heat energy attached, which actually helps us counter the two damage counter placed from Magma Basin. We we'll also have one copy of the Brilliant Stars NTV to help us attack fast, collect the first few knockouts while preparing our Volcanion on the bench with Magma Basin, doing at least 100 plus damage early for only two energies with Burning Rondo. And it also has the amazing ability Fleet Footed to help you draw that extra one card into your hand once near a turn if it's in the active spot. And we we'll also have one Radiant Grenade to help us draw two cards by discarding an energy from our hand, which actually does fit quite well with our Magma Basin. Our other draw supports include one Crobat V, two School Girls, two Marnie, two Research, one Shauna, one Bird Keeper, and one Kindler. For our starter cards, we have four VIP Pass, three Quick Ball, and two Capture for the Basic Summon, two Incense, and one Ultra Ball for our Evolutions. We also have three Switch, one Escape Room, and one Bird Keeper for our Heavy Retreat Pokemon. And also, since Magma Basin only allows you to attach to your Bench Fire Pokemon, it can also help us attack on our first turn going second if we get our Magma Basin to start and then one VIP Pass to bench our NT and Raiden Grenade ninja for the discard, helping us attach an extra 1 energy and switching to do burning rondo fast. Finally, we have 1 single strike energy for the damage boost and 2 balls order for the extra power play. So that's all for the deck that says good for gameplay! Okay, let's go in for our first game versus Arcus V-Star with... Um, I'm not sure what they have. I think Moltres and Zapdos. So they got a anti meta box. They got Moltres against uh, Mew VMAX and Shadow Rider. They got Zapdos against, uh, you know... Mirror Arceus match. Mirror match Arceus. Okay, getting our VIP for the first turn. That is delicious. We're gonna play our Quick Ball for another basic. So always think about benching your Snover early. Getting your Snover out fast. That way you get to tank a lot of damage with your Volcanion from the get-go because Arceus can attack very fast. We need to be taking it seriously to draw out our... To bench the, you know, to pull out a bomber snow fast and also to draw out the cape. Because once we get the cape, we get to add a lot of HP to our Volcanion. Um, heat energy had adds 20 extra more HP. So heat energy gets to actually reverse the damage counters from Magma Basin. And having 320 HP, raw HP on Volcanion actually helps it uh, prevent a knockout hit. Helps it survive at least one strike to do 250 damage on the next turn. So if they play something like Raichu V, Rayquaza V Max, um, Shadow Rider, I don't think we can win just because they can't do a one-hit knockout. Uh, if they play a two-hit knockout strategy, anything that requires two strikes, like Arcus V Star, you know, they are actually not playing any V Maxes for this deck, so we actually stand a good chance of winning. Um, if they don't play those, if they play V-Star cards like Charizard as well, well, Charizard can do Star Blaze, but they only got that one strike. Fluff Bossar got that one strike. So if they do that one V-Star power, one V-Star attack like Aura Sphere as well, um, they can only Aura Star, my bad. They can only do one hit, one strike, one OHKO for that one V-Star power. And then after that, they need to do two strikes for the knockout, and that actually gives us the advantage. So all we need to do is sacrifice the first copy. The first V card has to be sacrificed. We can't do anything about that. That's fine. But if they play a full OHKO, a full OHKO like a Rayquaza V Max deck, there's no chance you're winning that. Raichu V, you have very low. There's you know, close to zero chance of winning if you're playing against those decks. It's just virtually impossible. So this list is a bit, is a bit different just because we have two Nickets, we have two Thievo. And not a lot of switch cards. We have a very different list. So only three basins as well. We got lucky and we actually got to... We got that first basin on the first turn. Um, a bit different from the original, you know. This is the original one. But uh, the final update is the best. And the one that I just reviewed earlier in this video is the final update. And that is the best version. It is a bit different from this one just because this is uh, the first one, the very first build of my Volcanion Thievil deck. 
and I quite love this combo, but it actually doesn't work that well without the meta cards. You need to add those meta cards. Like NTV is a powerful fire meta that needs to be that you know is basically an essential for any fire decks that you play. You need those Entei. You need Entei or Suicune or Raikou if you're playing any water, fire, electric types that actually has a really difficult combo. Uh, you need those cards just because they help you do a first strike fast. They help you attack fast. They help you draw cards with Fleet Foot. It's very, very good. It's a very, you know, cohesive. It's a, you know, a card that is meant to glue things together. You know, it's a cohesion card. So that's why Entei V is here for. We actually have three cups of Volcano V for this list and zero Entei. As you can see, no Entei Vs. We do have the single strike one though, obviously. Okay, we got a Kindler in our hand. They finally did their double turbo and they're doing their first strike with Trinity Nova. Viberal helping them draw a lot of cards. And here comes the Marnie. Most annoying card in format. Gonna get rotated at at fucking last. At long last, Marnie is no more on the next rotation. We got Roxanne, but that card only works late stage in the game, which could actually be much worse than Marnie, because at the final countdown, at, at, you know, by that late in the game, you need to be getting boss, you need to be having a good hand to help you win the game, because it's like that's the most crucial point in the game where you need cards in your hand and then Roxanne is gonna do, do, do the biggest disruption by the time you run out of your shady dealings by the time you run well you don't have shady dealings anymore for the next set for the next expansion for, for the next rotation there's not gonna be any more shady so once you run out of your star birth once you run out of your abilities you can't actually do anything there's no counter against Roxanne unless if you're playing Genesect or like Biberal, um, Greninja, Raiding Greninja, stuff like that. So there's always a counter for any cards, obviously, but you know, Roxanne can be actually a big disruption. Okay, we're gonna get Entei. I don't think we need to get anything at this point in the game. So they did Avery, which is horrible. They actually forced us to discard something on our bench and we chose to discard the Greninja which as you can see is screwing us over right now we got no cards in our hand we got nothing but energies we at least get to do our first dynamite tackle and then tank damage right now um do an extra 250 on the next turn killing that v star for our first uh v star knockout well we actually did a knockout on the last turn so we get our sec our second and third prize by killing the v star right now and they did another marty saving our hand that's great we got a schoolgirl okay zeptos is not doing anything they need two energies um moltres hits for mu v max so they're trying to so they're trying to knock out Mew with one hit. They're trying to knock out Arceus with one hit. Is a basically this deck is tailored against the meta, right? They're trying to kill meta decks with those uh, Galarian birds, I suppose. <clears throat> and then play Sharon for the Arceus. Apparently, they didn't get their Sharon, so it's much easier to draw out Sharon with your Shady than Bibero. And if you play a Sharon, you need to have another bench Arceus, which they actually do. So I don't think it's that easy. Uh, sorry, I don't think it's that difficult to pull that off if they have a Sharon in their deck. So I'm not sure even if they're playing that card. And they actually gave us a free knockout this turn, which is great. So no Sharon, we got our second and third prize. We're down to three remaining. They actually got six still. So it's looking pretty bad for them. We actually chose to attack with the second one. So that means we got 250 on the next turn as well. Just because both Volcanion is now... Uh, has 10 damage counters on them. More than 10, obviously. 
One has a cape, one doesn't. So we better be getting our cape fast. We got our bombersome in play, so it should be fine. Um, a bomber snow is a bit tricky though, because if they kill your bomber snow, if for example they keep your, uh, you know, they can choose to damage your Volcanion, like multiple copies of your Volcanion in play, they can choose to injure them until they have like 50 HP remaining for both, like for all of your Volcanions in play, and then boss your Obama Snow, to knocking out all of your Volcanion, including that Obama Snow at the same time with one knockout. Killing the Obama Snow kills everything, just because it actually cuts off that final 50 HP. So that's the danger, that's the danger zone of playing this Obama Snow. That's the that's the main problem of this deck. You have to watch out for that. So we have no heal cards, there's no way to counter that unless if you can, you know, attach your heat energy or deny yourself that Magma Basin support. Because if you attach with Magma Basin, you're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to put extra damage counter on your own Volcanion, and we don't want to be damaging our own Volcanion too much. We want to be wise in using that Stadium card. Always be wise in thinking, think it through for every decision that you make, even the tiniest decision. Like, every single damage counter matters. Obviously, you can't take into account what's gonna happen later on in the game, but don't place too many damage counters. If you can afford to, don't do it. Like, one extra energy is enough. If they play a lot of Crushing Hammers, like Arctozolt and Crushing Hammer, then you're gonna have to play Basin a lot of times. And like, I don't know. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think they can do a lot of damage either if they're playing Arctozolt and Crushing Hammer, because that Fossil actually requires a lot of support. Like if they do Whimsicott with Crushing Hammer, you're gonna be forced to reattach from the discard pile over and over and over. But they are not doing that much damage anyways. Uh, with the double turbo, Winsicott only gets to do 140. So they still need like at least two strikes to knock out the that one Volcanion, which is a bit sad. Tool Jammer is a big thing though. It's actually a big thing now. Um, it's gonna cut your HP down by 50, which is a lot. Cape of Toughness is gonna get rotated. Let's not forget that is actually quite early. Is I think it's from Sword and Shield. Cape of Toughness is the like the earliest tool card ever. Leon's cape, right? <laughs> okay, we got I think a Kindler in our hand. Um, so it actually has uh, a second attack. Entei has a second attack. Heat tackle doing 120 damage, uh, doing 30 damage to itself. And you get to kill Mill Tank with your second attack. You get to do Angry Fang to kill a Mill Tank as well. But obviously, you know, if they don't damage your Volcanion, you should be doing Heat Tackle for um, a one price knockout. So, uh, things like Altaria the City is gonna get rotated. So we have Mill Tank now, which is a basic, much better than Altaria. Much, much better than the City Y. Okay, we hit 250 damage. We don't have a choice belt for this deck. I actually tried playing like one copy of choice belt just because you get to do extra damage with Entei as well. So the good thing about Entei is that you're doing damage instead of damage counters. You're doing damage. That means you get to do like choice belt, Magma Basin. You get to add more damage counters on your bench single strike Pokemons for extra, like for the damage boost on your Angry Fang. You get to do more damage with choice belt as well. So... Even though you may not hit like 300 plus damage, that choice belt is going to help you top it off for a one-hit knockout against a VMAX, against a V-Star with a big charm. So that's why I love this combo so much, just because if they hit your Volcanion, even if they hit like only 20 damage counters, if they have, if you only have 200, 20 damage counters on your bench Volcanion, if you're only doing 200 damage with Angry Fang, you get to slowly injure yourself, you get to slowly damage your own Volcanion turn after turn by doing Basin over and over until you have like at least 250 damage with your Angry Fang, 260 or 280, which is not bad. 
Uh, and you even get to Magma Basin on your other single strike Pokemon as well. If you have another, if you have a second Entei, you get to base into, you get uh, 20 extra damage while charging it up for the next attack. You know, you get 20 extra damage, uh, you know, by doing a base in on your second Entei. Okay, here comes the Moltres, I suppose. We got one prize remaining. Now, now that they are down to two prize, our opponent has two prize cards remaining. That means Thievil's ability is activated. So right now, here's where the game begins. But, well, it's already ended though, to be honest, because um, if they kill... If they kill anything on the bench, I think they can still survive the game because we are only doing 100 damage. That's the bad thing about Volcanion. Um, that's why you need an Entei. That's the bad thing about Volcanion. They can do double boss to win the game right now. Or like escape rope. One escape rope, one boss. If they hit the Volcanion, they're done. They can't do a one-hit knockout, unfortunately. They got no choice belt. Even with the choice belt, it's not enough because we got 250 HP on the Volcanion. They need a raw 250 damage, and they actually hit our Volcanion. That means we got a clean 250 damage with our Dynamite Tackle. We can't even do Angry Fang after the Bird Keeper uh, with our Entei Single Strike to collect the Knockout. So that's already the end of the game. We don't actually need our Thievil. Thievil is actually not doing much for that game just because they're doing a 2-hit knockout strategy. They actually gave us the win right there with their Entei Meta Box. They're not doing a 1-hit knockout, so that's a good thing. Um, we actually stand a really high chance of winning if they are playing nothing but Arceus. Nothing but uh, those Galarian birds, Ultras and Zepdos. No Articuno though. Articuno doesn't actually get to do um, that much damage. Only 110. So even if you are hitting the weakness against Urshifu, you're, you're not doing a knockout because it's only it's less than 150. Even with the choice belt, it's still not enough to kill a VMAX. So that's the bad thing about Articuno. But you can actually, you can at least confuse your opponent's active Pokemon though. Um, for 110 damage, 140 if you have a choice belt. Sai Ray, not too bad. People play that card mostly for the ability reconstitute. So right now, right now we're up against Whimsicott V Star. They got Fluff Ball Star for that one strike, that one OHKO strike. That means we need to be prepared for a one hit knockout. Um, if they kill Volcanion with one hit, we have to somehow set up the next one. So make sure you spread your energies from the get-go. Always be prepared from the very start. Uh, don't attach too much energy on the first one. Always invest like a little bit at a time on both. So one energy on one Volcanion, Magma Basin on the other, and then attack with your Entei while you're waiting for your for both Volcanion to charge up for the attack. You can actually do Heat Blast before the first uh, Dynamite Tackle. So you don't actually need to... You don't need 3 energies for your first hit. Just because you are you are allowed to tank damage. You are planning on doing Dynamite Tackle late. Because you're only doing harder damage anyways. Might as well just do Heat Blast before the 250 damage. To collect a VMAX or a V Star Knockout. So if they do a VMAX though. Heat Blast is not enough right? So Heat Blast 50 plus 250, we don't have a choice belt, is actually not enough to kill a VMAX. So I suppose if you're up against a VMAX, it's better to just do Dynamite Tackle fast. But since we have NTV now, that's the power of this card. Um, that's the, you know, it's basically a Heat Cohesion card, right? Ente Suicune Raikou, they are pulling out those new power combos. Those are the power meta cards that is essential for any fire decks that you play, electric water decks. We have those powerful supports now because without those support, we couldn't do anything. Previously, without, you know, when I first built this deck, I didn't put Entei in it. I have no Entei V and without that card, I couldn't attack fast. I couldn't do anything because initially, you need three energies to do Dynamite Tackle is a lot to, like, it's virtually impossible to do that. And if you don't get Magma Basin early, there's no way to search for that card. If you don't play Skyla, Peony, there's no way to draw out your Stadium card unless, you know, if you're lucky enough to draw it out with your supporter. You may not even get it until your third turn. Like, there's no telling when you're going to get your supporter card, uh, when you're going to get your Stadium card. 
So that's why it's so important. Like, you cannot go without those cards now. They're giving you a support that you need to be playing. That's why it's called the meta. So we're adding quite a lot of meta cards for this deck. We have our meta NTV, we have our meta Magma Basin, quite a meta card, I would say. Uh, an essential for any fire decks. We got our meta Radiant Greninja, which is actually the perfect the perfect match to, you know, a match made in heaven with our Magma Basin. We got our um, Cape of Toughness, a Bomb of Snow, obviously. And also, well, not a lot of other supports. We got our Heat Energy for fire types. Okay, they got no bench right now. They have no Biberal, which is a bit sad. But they did play a couple of hammers. And they got their first hits just now. Discarding an energy from our Entei, um, I think they discarded from, yeah, they discarded from Entei, pretty sure. And they did their first strike before we get to do ours. That means they get to collect the knockout right now, but they actually hit something else though, which is not smart because they could actually deny us the knockout hit on the next turn by killing the Entei. So had they killed the Entei, they're choosing not to. I'm just giving off spoilers right now, but it's fine. <laughs> So they actually decided to do Fluff Ball Star this turn on the Volcanion, which is quite silly, I would say, because they're not doing a knockout on the Volcanion. They should have, they would fare better just knocking out the active right now, because we cannot kill the Whimsicott. We are not, we have not able to knock it out on the next turn, even with the single strike energy on the Volcanion. That's how useless that card is, honestly. Because without any damage counters on Volcanion, you're doing a raw 100 damage. It's ridiculously weak. It's ridiculously weak. But I don't think it's too bad though. We can still survive the game because they are not doing anything else. So after the, that one Fluff Ball Star knockout, we can actually tank a lot of damage for our next Volcanion. So if they kill the Entei, if they knock out the Entei on their last turn, we have no choice but to do, um, you know, we have no choice but to put Volcanion in the active because it's going to get killed anyways on the bench. We have no mana fee. Uh, we're just going to do Dynamite Tackle or something. We got a switch card, so we're probably going to do like Dynamite Tackle. And then collect the knockout with Heat Blast for our second Volcanion. And then all we need to do is tank damage with that second copy, that second Volcanion, which is actually our final V card. Because they, they already draw four prize cards after they are Fluff Ball Star by then. And that means we got like... A few more turns to collect a lot of price cards so if we did heat blast if we did heat blast for our second volcanion we would get our first two prize and then they would to counter that they would get their second whimsy card by then because they can actually quite easily bench it and then evolve do trick win tricky win for their first strike on our volcanion for 120 damage or maybe 160 if they got their right hand and then they actually need a second strike on that Volcanion to kill it off. Or maybe even a third strike if they got their double turbo attached. So that's the bad thing about Whimsicott, it's not doing a lot of damage. After that one Flop All Star, they need at least two strikes to kill any VMAX or V-Star card. Or even a V-card, because it's only 140 damage. So even without the Choice Belt, sorry, even without the Cape of Toughness, which is going to get rotated pretty soon, I think I already said that, but... Uh, even without those HP boost, Whimsicott is not killing Volcanion with one strike, obviously. So, uh, continuing the train of thought, uh, they would be down to two prize remaining. We would have actually four prize cards left. So by then, we need to be thinking about getting our Thievel out. So once we do, you know, by the time we do our first Heat Blast, collecting our first two prize, that is the turn that we need to be benching our Nicket at the same time. And I don't think it's that easy to do that because as you can see right now, we actually got no a basic, you know, no way of drawing that basic Pokemon out into our hand. Um, even after the research or something, I don't know. We could play a different game though. It, it's an entirely different story if they kill the Entei. You know, if they chose to knock out the Entei on that turn, it would be a completely different story. We would be needing, we would need to draw out the Nicket. That is our, uh, that is our saving grace. That card is our saving grace. Thievel 
Without that card in play, we would not be able to win that game at all because Fluff Ball Star is going to give them their second V knockout. And then after that, they just need to focus on one V card, either a Crobat or a Volcanion on the bench. So when we, when we do our first Heat Blast, we need to be thinking of benching the Nicket. And then on the next turn, evolve into Thievul, tank damage, retreat to... Uh, tank damage with our, what do you call that, Volcanion, retreat to, retreat or switch to our Entei, single strike, do our Angry Fang, and then once that, once that Entei gets knocked out, or if they play a boss, they're not gonna, you know, it's gonna get cancelled, that effect is gonna get cancelled thanks to Cleavel, if they boss something else, they're gonna be forced to kill a one prize, kill for one prize, and then after that, we actually get to do Entei a second time, we get to do Angry Fang twice, collecting two V-Star knockouts, which is the main Thing we need to be thinking about if we can't kill a v-star we better be doing a boss on the crobat or like you know while we you know if we do a boss on the crobat we can do our first v kill and then for our next v kill we need to be knocking out the v-star by well by then we would have at least a few extra damage counters with our magma basin on our entei so hopefully that would actually earn us our final two prize but it's actually pretty tight though if if they kill our entei it would be an entirely different game and I think we actually don't stand a big chance at winning unless if they don't bench the Whimsicott fast and as you can see earlier they couldn't even bench it on the next turn after doing the Fluffball Star so I don't know it's anyone else's game honestly anyone's game you never know what they're gonna draw from top deck you never know if they are able to bench a basic after the first the first kill after doing their first uh, V knockout. Don't underestimate Whimsicott though, because they got Fluff Gets In Away. Fluff Gets In Away is going to help them uh, survive that one turn before, just before the evolution. So if you're playing a V deck, like if you're playing Sneasler or something like that, Beedrill V, nothing but V cards in your deck, Alakazam, Zashin V, stuff like that is still in, you know, it's still in season, I suppose, Zashin. If you are doing those decks, they can actually do Fluff Gets in a way, earn them that extra one turn to survive before they pull out their V-Star, and then they can actually do Tricky Win after that. So it's a protection, one turn protection. Pretty interesting, isn't it? So they got a choice belt, we got two prize remaining, they got like six prize remaining, it's not looking too good for them. Uh, they need boss order, because we're denying them any prize, we're, we're not giving them a single prize by switching and retreating our Entei V, and also the Volcanion, hitting, attacking with like single strike Entei having 200 extra damage, sorry 200 extra HP, 100 extra HP, sorry, I'm not... I'm not articulating too well. So Entei right now has 220 HP uh, without the damage counters. It has like 180 HP remaining. So they can't actually knock it out with Tricky Wind. They can't knock it out with one strike. They need two hits. Isn't that sad? They can't kill our one prize card. Thanks to a Bomber Snow, Entei is a V... It has the HP equivalent to a V card. Angry Fang for the knockout, doing 300 damage thanks to Magma Basin. We got extra 2 damage counters. So that's the power of Basin, the power of Fire deck, the power of Entei. I'm loving this deck so much though, I love this combo. It didn't actually work that well when I first built it, unfortunately. Um, we got a few interesting games that we couldn't manage to fit into this video just because we lost those games. Uh, it was really interesting though. It was really tight because we almost won them. One was against Victini VMAX. We almost won. We get to showcase our Thievul had they not played that Pokemon Catcher. So they played Pokemon Catcher at the last minute. They have two prizes remaining and we have that final three prize. We get our free shot we get to kill the v victini vmax on the next turn for the final three pies winning winning the game on the next turn but they actually did a pokemon catcher to draw out the volcanion on the bench and they killed it before we get to do the knockout we, before we get to kill their vmax 
So they won the game with a Pokemon catcher, which is horrible because they got two prize remaining. That means they can't do a boss. That is just the worst feeling ever. Another game was equally as soul crushing because they actually played Reggie. So they are playing Reggie. Uh, they did Reggie Ileki for a bench knockout and they were pretty smart at playing that. I would give it to them, but it was there. There was nothing we could do about it because they did like a uh, choice belt on the Reggie ice. They did 260 damage on one Entei, and then after that they did a boss before they collect the the second two prize. So they actually kept their prizes down to four. They kept it at four, and then they 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 do as much as they can to damage both Entei's, sorry, both Volcanions, because we actually have both in play. They so it's actually smarter to bench one at a time, but we don't actually have the luxury to do that though, just because we need to charge it up with energies while we do that. So we, it's always better to just bench two Volcanion, have two Volcanions in play. But if you do that, you run the risk of your opponent like damaging both Pokemons at the same time and then slowly knocking them out, you know, slowly piling up enough damage counters to prepare for a double knockout. So double knockout meaning they can actually draw their final remaining, they, they can draw all the remaining four prizes with one strike. And that's what they did. That's what Ileki did. They did Reggie Ice to damage both uh, both our Volcanions and then Telespark, I forgot the attack, uh, Reggie, Reggie like he did the final knockout hit to kill for drawing 4 prize with that one electric type move which is just soul crushing because if we actually got our Thievul out as well, we only play one copy but we were lucky enough to have it in play so it's really soul crushing that we couldn't use it, we couldn't use those recordings because we lost them it was a miserable defeat at that we got pretty close but throughout this entire video i think we get to showcase thievil once only once but it's there i mean i'm happy i'm proud to say that it is there but you get you have to watch the entire video i'm sorry you have to watch the entire video to find out where it is but we get to showcase thievil's powerful baffling ability Denying them that boss, they actually did play a boss and they couldn't do it. They couldn't do a Crobat knockout. They wanted to kill the Crobat on the bench. Um, we have actually a Volcanion damaged on the bench as well. And we get to do our Angry Fang for the knockout. I'm not sure though. I think we did Dynamite Tackle for the knockout. Or maybe Angry Fang. I'm not too sure. But, well, they did a boss. That's the, main, the, that's the most important thing. They did a boss. Okay, right now we're up against Mew Max. Genesect is a metal type and we get to do our first strike killing a metal Pokemon which is the most satisfying thing ever. We got our first two prize against a Mew VMAX deck. Look at that. Without having to play our boss. There we go. 280 damage. I suppose that's the bad thing about Mew VMAX decks is that you are playing a lot of V supports. Like you are benching a lot of Genesex on your uh to for the draw support, and that means your opponent gets to play a lot of bosses for quick two prize wins. They get to draw two prize easy and fast by doing like 200 plus damage to kill uh one Genesect at a time, avoiding a VMAX knockout. If they can't do that much damage, they can actually do like Beedrill as well. Beedrill gets to kill a Genesect with a Telescope Excite. Because they can play Orico Rio to deny, to reduce damage done by 20 for the, for the defense buff. And you actually need like 210 damage. 210 to kill a Volcanion. Oh, I keep calling the wrong cards the wrong name. Uh, 210 damage to kill a Genesect. That means Beedrill needs that Telescope Excite. Or a choice belt if you play a boss, I suppose. You don't see a lot of people playing Genesect for, as the attacker, right? Like, nothing but Genesect. Genesect Toxtricity. I've seen people play that, but not a lot. Just because v, v Maxes are kind of out these days. It's out of the game these days. Um, v Stars is in season. So Toxtricity is not doing anything. Might as well just play uh, Power Tablet Mew VMAX 
So it's a very interesting deck that they're playing. They actually have Avery, obviously a very common card to be playing for Mew Max, but they actually have a Tool Jammer on the Mew Max, which is horrible because now we have no Cape of Toughness. Cape of Toughness is not going to give us extra 50 HP. We're down to 270, and we actually did a Magma Basin on our last turn. That means our Volcanion now has only 250 HP on it. Without the Heat Energy, it's kind of done. Even with the Heat Energy, they get to play like two Power Tablets for the Knockout. Uh, they still need two Power Tablets though. If they do like Meloetta, they can actually do Melodious Echo for the Knockout. So that's the bad thing. Um, the, the most dangerous thing we need to watch out for right now uh, in this game is Melodious Echo. Because if they play that Meloetta and Elisa, and then attach a Fusion Strike Energy, if they are lucky enough to draw it into their hand, one copy, they can actually play Elisa for two... Well, it's actually quite tight though, right? It's pretty tight because if they draw it into their hand, they can't do Elisa. If they have like too many Fusion Strike Energies in their hand, they can't play that supporter. If they have not, you know, they need one energy, one special energy in their hand. If they don't have that extra one, they're only doing a raw 210 damage, which is the same as Technoblast. So they only get to do it uh, that many times though. Because if they don't have Roseanne, if they don't play Roseanne in their deck, and if you if we get to boss the Meloetta with the Fusion Strike Energy attached, we don't have to kill the Mew to remove that special energy from play. And once that special energy is off, they have nothing but Genesec to rely on the, the on the, the on the damage, right? They need they can only do up to 210 damage max with the Mew V Max. So the maximum damage output is 210. Once that Meloetta, once those fusion strike energies is out of the game. But until then, they can actually conserve their power tablets. Until then, they can save those power tablets. And then do Melodious Echo for a one-hit knockout against the Volcanion. And then for the final V knockout, they can actually play the Power Tablet. So that's the power of Meloetta. Do not underestimate that card. That card is a beast. It's a crazy fucking beast. Meloetta for 280 damage. Isn't that crazy? It's just fucking bonkers. 280 damage. So we got our Kindler. Are we going to play it right now? Okay, we chose to do it, I suppose. We're probably going to get an energy with Kindler anyway. So let's just draw one energy and something else. We got a Cape, which is not going to help us because they got a Tool Jammer. Um, maybe on the next one, it might. So let's just play our Cape diligently. And then, oh, we actually chose to discard it though. We got no Switch card. Oh, we, we can retreat, my bad. We can actually retreat. So we should be attacking with Entei first, but they are probably going to boss something on a bench. They're probably going to boss and knock out the Vulcanion while they can. Um, but if they do that, we actually get to Burning Rondo a second time for the knockout. Um, unless if they do like Psychic Leap. I don't think they can afford to play Psychic Leap though, because they're not doing enough damage. Okay, this is a very interesting point in the game. Um, are they going to kill the Entei or are they going to kill our Volcanion? Because if we get our base in, we can actually attach... Well, we don't have any retreat though. We don't have a way to switch our Pokemon. So if we get a switch from the research and a base in, we can actually attach the single strike energy onto the Volcanion. Base in for that extra... Uh, to, for the extra fire energy, switch to it to attack for 120 damage to kill the Mew. They don't actually have an Oracorio in play. That means 120 is enough to kill it. Okay. It's a very interesting game. No Oracorio, but they do have that Tool Jammer. That ridiculous, dangerous card, Tool Jammer. So they played Tablet. This is a really funny, like, they, they're doing something very funny right now. I I have no idea why they did that, but they should be playing Technoblast. I think they forgot to count how many Fusion Strike Energy they have in play. Because they actually did double Power Tablet. That means they can actually do Technoblast for the knockout. 
I think they bossed the Volcanion. So they bossed the Volcanion and played two tablets. And they just do... There we go, their second tablet. And they just did Melodious Echo, which is horrible. Melodious Echo only is doing 140 raw damage, so plus the 60 is only 200 damage. Had they done Techno Blast, they could attack on the next turn, but they're, they're gonna die anyways, so might as well just do Techno Blast. Makes no sense. <laughs> oh well. They got 6 prize remaining, so we actually do our first 2 prize first. So it's looking pretty well for us. Once they run out of that, you know, once they run out of those power tablets, they're going to be pretty much screwed. They have to kill the Entei. If they kill the Volcanion, we actually get our free knockout on the Mew. And then the next one may not have a tool jammer anymore. And that means it may not be that easy. And if we kill this Mew, they actually have two left, you know, two fusion strike energy left. That means Melodious Echo. Melodious Echo is off the table. That's the... That's the main thing we need to be concerned about. Melodious Echo is off the table once this Mew loses its energies. Once we knock out this, this VMAX. So what are they going to do? Are they going to double turbo, retreat, and attack with a new one? What are they going to do? I think they're going to attack with this one. Okay, um, there we go. Cross Fusion Strike and they did Melodious Echo. Look at that. They're going to do it. There we go. I have no idea why they did that. Because they actually got it. They got a knockout. They got 260 damage. And we only have 250 HP. They get to kill our first Volcanion. But they actually chose not to. That means we get to Dynamite Tackle for the Knockout, but we're just going to play our Entei. We're going to force them to waste their boss order um, for another, for, you know, to knock out the same Volcanion. And then, you know, the next one is not going to be that easy to kill. So right now they have one Power Tablet remaining, and once this Mew is off the table, once we kill it, uh, once, you know, once it's dead, we actually get to deny them that Melodious Echo, crazy, crazy powerful attack for 280 damage. And that means they can't one-shot our next Volcanion. The next Volcanion cannot be killed with one hit. It's not possible. So even if they do Techno Blast this turn, we are still good. Just because we can remove that fusion strike energy from play. I'm repeating myself a lot, but it's like really important. Sorry guys. And also we get to uh you know waste them. We get to waste that power tablet. They are wasting those item cards. They may play Silene. Silene for power tablet and then um Genesect to draw them back out. But they need to flip coins though. If they're lucky enough to flip two heads, they can still win the game, I suppose. It's anyone else, anyone's game at any point in the game, honestly. <laughs> if you're playing coin flip cards like Crushing Hammer, Silene, it's just really... I don't know. It's ridiculous, isn't it? You never know what you're gonna flip. Everything is a gamble. Even when you think it... Even when you think it isn't, it actually is. Everything in life is a gamble. Okay. Like, you have no idea how little control we have over, like, the elements in our life. We really don't have much control or say in anything. Most of us would like to think that we do, but we don't really. And we need to really be humble enough to accept that we don't need to control stuff to be happy. We don't really need that much, that level of control to keep our to keep ourselves healthy to keep ourselves happy to keep ourselves uh, you know living a good life is not necessary control is not necessary although it would be you know 
nice to have that level of control, it's just not necessary. Okay, anyways, let's just get back to the game. Right now, we're up against another Psychic deck. We actually won against Miri Max, which is great. They drew zero prizes, though. They could have drawn... I think they just gave up. Because they could have done Techno Blast, but they knew... They knew that, that Miri Max is going to get knocked out on the next turn. They're not doing any more... They're not doing any more knockouts after that. Like, it's not possible for them to one-shot the next Volcanion without Melodious Echo, without their Power Tablets. They are done. They're juiced out. So that one knockout is all they can do. And then after that, we got our Entei for knockout. We got another Volcanion. We got our Thievil out. We got our single strike Entei for the final the final double strike. We get to do Angry Angry Fang. Uh you know, two times. Having our Volcanion in the, on the bench. You know, stay on the bench for two turns straight, which is great. Because there's no way they can boss it. They can still play cross cross switcher. They can still play uh, Pokemon Catcher, which is horrible. We got catchered by Victini. Victini V Maxes. Victini V Max decks play a lot of items. They play Crushing Hammer, Fan of Ways, Pokemon Catcher. It's just so annoying. They actually played a catcher, and would you believe it? At the last second, they got a heads, and at the last second, they actually did a Pokemon Catcher Knockout while having our Thievil on the bench. That was like basically a shit on our faces. They're shitting on our faces by playing that crazy item card for a boss effect. It's so annoying, guys. It's just so annoying. So right now we're up against Deoxys, a single strike fusion strike combo. They got no rapid strike. I think they got one rapid strike energy. But that's it, no other Rapid Strike cards. So it's very interesting. It's a very interesting deck indeed. Because they got a Bomber Snow, Houndoom, uh, a Riku Rio, they got Elisa. Very, very cool deck. I love it. Very off meta. Not too off meta though, because it's kind of obvious. Like what, what you could do with. There's not much you could do with. Deoxys, honestly. But they're trying to squeeze as much out from this card as they can by doing full-on fusion and single. Right? Fusion, single. They are not playing Octillery. They are not playing um, any, you know, Tower of Waters. They're not doing that. They're doing instead Houndoom, Obama Snow, Rico Rio, Elisa. That's like a solid power attacker and like choice belt. Or maybe like super effective glass, uh, cape of toughness, stuff like that. Tool card for the power support as well. So we got our boss early. Let's just kill the snubber before they get their um, HP boost. Just because Volcanion can't actually do a one hit knockout if they got their Obama Snow. But I don't think we can do a one hit knockout without tanking damage first because they got Oriko Rio out already. Without the Oriko Rio, we could have done it just because we have a single strike energy attached. So that one single strike energy is actually doing a lot. Um, do, do not underestimate that one copy. I would love to have Houndoom in this deck though, but we can't, we don't have the bench spot for it. We don't have the space for that card. We don't, we couldn't fit it in. There's no way we could do it. We need too many trainer supports, we need too many um, draw supports, energies as well. I tried playing 14 energies, it doesn't work. I tried 13, it doesn't work. You need a solid 15 copies. You need 15 energies to be able to attach on your first turn. That's how bad this game is. You need so many energies now. It's horrible, it's just ridiculous. Some decks, I don't know, some decks do really well with a few energies. But some decks just demand a lot of energies. This is one of those decks. You can't afford to go easy on the energies. So we're gonna do Burning Rondo for our second knockout, but we could play Escape Rope. Um, let's just do it on the next turn. So I think they got a bit frustrated because we are delaying the game. 
Um, we're just thinking whether or not to play like the item cards. Okay, here comes the Home Doom from Villain Stars. We got Gris uh, Grimsley, I think. Grimsley's Home Doom. Elisa for Fusion Strike Energy. They only get to do, uh, do it once or twice though. Elisa is not really that powerful. Houndoom is more, is better in a sense. So Twin Energy, Rapid Strike Energy, Elisa, Houndoom, right? If you do a Single Strike 4, you can attach a Rapid Strike Energy from your hand, or you can do Elisa for the Fusion. It's not too smart though to play you know, Elisa on the same Pokemon because you need Photon Boost only do extra damage if you have a Fusion Strike Energy attached. That means, you know, for your next attacker, you need a Fusion Strike on the next one as well. So they're investing like two Fusion Strike on each copy, that's not smart. Because now they can only do 160 twice. Because we're doing a knockout every single turn. Um, well, not for the next turn though. We can't actually kill the next Deoxys that easily. Because um, Volcanion is not doing a knockout. My bad. We got our Thievil out. So this is the game that we get to do it, guys. This is the game that Thievil actually gets to shine. Finally, Thievil gets to shine. You'll see that they actually did a boss later on. Okay, Photon Boost. 180 damage. Single and Fusion. So if they... If they attach a Rapid Strike Energy from their hand, and then single strike roar for that extra one. They can actually do only 100 damage with photon boost because they need the fusion strike energy for extra 80. So they're not doing 180, they're only doing 100 damage. <clears throat> That's why I suppose they're not playing those rapid strike supports. You could do Rapid Strike Scroll though. Rapid Strike Scroll for your um, Deoxys, which, which would be pretty cool. Concealed Cards. The, the, the ability's name and the attack's name is so cool though. Greninja, Raiding Greninja, Moonlight Shuriken, and Concealed Cards. It's so cool, right? Concealed card sounds like, like a, I don't know. It sounds like a, what's it called? A samurai technique or something, right? A samurai technique. And then you got Moonlight Shuriken. Very cool. Okay, there we go. We tanked a lot of damage and now we get to do Dynamite Tackle. Um, so this is the risky part. We actually need to kill one at a time. And we can't do a knockout for our next Volcanion either. Because we're doing only 100 damage and Orikuryo is reducing by another 20. That means even with the roar, even if they roar and place two damage counters on their own Pokemon, Orico Rio is saving saving them from the knockout. So we could do a boss to kill the Orico Rio to guarantee us the win without the Thievil. But I don't think it's I don't think it matters. Because if we kill the Orico Rio, they could attach a double energy on their next turn instead of playing the single strike roar. And we still couldn't do 120 damage to kill the Deoxys. If they roar though, we can actually do 100 damage to knock it out. So we did Kindler instead of the boss and searched for two cards from the top seven. And now we did Heat Energy on the bench. Dynamite Tackle for the kill. Okay, so now their main move is to kill two V killing to kill two Vs in two turns. If they can pull that off, then they actually win the game. They still they still have a good chance at winning, just because we can't actually knock out we're not doing a knockout this turn. So on this turn, not yet. 
I'm gonna wait for wait for it. There we go. On this turn, we're not doing a knockout. That means on their next turn, if they can kill a V card, they win the game. But they're not able to just because boss is denied by Thievil. And they can't actually knock out our active Volcanion that easily. Because it has 320 HP remaining. Thanks to that heat energy attached. Even with two damage counters on it. 340 raw HP. Look at that. It's a VMAX now. They need tool jammer, tool scrapper. There we go. They did a boss on the Crobat. They did a boss on the Crobat. Look at that. Oh, the most satisfying feeling in the whole world. That is the best, man. Thievil worked. Thievil worked at last. The ability finally gets to shine. For the very first time. Thievil gets to use Baffling. Yay, Thievil! <laughs> Astro Radiance. Oh my goodness, the first time ever. Okay, right now we're up against a Grass deck, which is our weakness. We get to play the weakness to knock it out with one hit. A Dynamite Tackle is not doing a lot of damage though, but we can do Entei for the knockout. I don't think we have an Entei V, so this is the earlier version of our Volcanion Thievil combo and the early list does not have an NTV. I'm sad to say. I wasn't smart enough to think about it and then eventually after losing a lot of games at you know after playing a, like close to 40 games I would say I won a lot for the first few games but after like the first loss it became like a downward spiral because, I don't know, the algorithm works that way. If you lose a game that you're supposed to win, if you lose a game that you're supposed to win just because you make a dumb mistake, then they're gonna give you the worst matchup for some reason. I have no idea why. They just keep giving you worse matchups, like uh, Ice Rider matchups, Water type Pokemons, or like One Prize matchups, card decks that you're not able to win, a Durant, something like that. There's no chance we're winning against a water deck. There's no chance we're winning against a one price Regigigas gas unless we're if we're smart enough. But if the you know if you make a mistake, they're just gonna screw you over, over and over and over. It's ridiculous. And eventually you're gonna reach that point where you're like, you know what? This deck isn't really that good. What can I do to make it better? And the only thing that I can think about is Entei V, which is actually a very big upgrade, a huge upgrade to this fire deck, a massive update. And we actually did a, uh, you know, fine, fine tune the deck as well. We did a couple of tweaks at, you know, add an extra copy of Magma Basin, add more energies to the deck, more supporter cards, stuff like that. And eventually we had only once we had only the space for one copy of Thievo, which is actually a bit sad. We couldn't do baffling that easily, but it's okay. Um, if we you know, we don't actually need that ability in most games anyways, but if we can use the ability, it would be great. It is main is the you know main theme of this video anyways. We want to be featuring this entire video off of Thievo. But it may not be actually that effective just because we are only playing one copy of the basic and the stage one. But we don't have the space for anything else. We, if we play two copies, we're not able to fit in enough draw support. We're not able to fit in enough magma basins for us to get it, get it out early. If you don't play four copies, you're not going to get it out at any point in the game. It's just that bad. You need at least... Like, there's no... There, there's no debate about it. You need four solid copies of that stadium card. That you cannot afford to reduce even one. I tried three copies. It does not work. It just doesn't work. You need four. End of end of story. You just need four. And fifteen energies. That's how tight this deck is. I tried without the crowbat. It doesn't work. Like, when I first built this deck, there was no Crobat. There was no Crobat. We even got a Manaphy. Like, it's just... It doesn't work.
Okay, they got Hisuian Litigan already charged up, ready to go on the next turn. We got our Volcanion with full HP. They are not doing a one-hit knockout, so we're good. I don't think Flapple and Choice Belt gets to do a one-hit knockout. 260 plus 20. Even with two Flapples, they're only doing a max of 300 damage. And we got zero damage counters on Volcanion. We didn't even do our Magma Basin on the active. If they do a boss on the bench though, they may be able to kill it. So we got our Obama Snow, but we got no cape on the bench. That's a bad thing. Obama Snow is finally out. And we actually got a Crobat for this list, which is great, but we got no NTV though. Got like three Volcanions. It wasn't until later that I realized we are playing a double Entei deck. Entei V and Single Strike Entei. Pretty interesting, isn't it? That's a meme on it on its own. Lilligant Star Perfume. I love that name. Star Perfume. Look at that. Now they're gonna search for the Applin. Rasa Energy, they got the Cricketune out already, but it's not doing anything. Cricketune, I mean, you can't face against fire decks. So we got the perfect matchup, I suppose. If we're not playing a fire type, I don't think I don't think it's too difficult still. Because we got 250 damage. Um, it's not quite enough though, because they got 290 HP. And if they play like a choice uh, I keep calling every tool for a choice belt, my bad. If they play like a big charm, they can actually add up to 20, 320 HP for that litigant. Is it 260? I think it's 260. So they have 300 HP without the big charm. And it's going to get rotated on next on the next rotation, by the way. Big charm is going to get rotated. Uh, but if they have that tool card, they actually get 330 HP on the litigant. I actually quite like the original Lilligan. I don't quite like the Hisuian one. It doesn't look... It looks a bit weird. It looks like a lesbian. I'm sorry, but... No, I have nothing against lesbians, but... It, it, she, it, she just looks weird. She doesn't look like a, a normal grass Pokemon. It's like some gender... She, she doesn't look like a normal lesbian either. I'm sorry guys, I'm, I'm, I'm sounding a bit weird, a bit racist or something. But nothing against lesbians, just... Uh, she just looks really weird. Like some, some genderqueer sort of weird, gender-confused Pokemon. I'm probably gonna get into a lot of trouble just by talking about that, sorry guys, but I had to say something, she just looks weird. <laughs> okay, they got Shaman on the bench already. Shaman is gonna do the knockout hit, um, but are they gonna be able to pull it out at the right time? That's the question. If we can uh, kill the Shaman, we better do it fast. We need our boss, there we go. We need to be bossing the Shaman as early as we can. We got our first knockout right now, but are they gonna be able to kill our Volcanion with the Shaman later? Do they have enough damage? So they're doing 240 damage because we drew only three prize. 240 plus five damage counters. Eight damage counters. Oh my goodness, we have we got eight. So that's like 330 so I think they could kill us they could kill the bench already oh my goodness this is quite bad they got like one hit KO strategy with Shaman they just need to evolve the second one Gardenia on the second one they got like 
the next one to attack as well. Um, we just need to base in again and then switch to the bench. If we don't base in, if we don't place extra do two damage counters, we can't actually knock it out on the next. Oh, they actually gave us, they gave us a free knockout though. That that was quite silly. Now we don't need a switch card. We don't need to do the research. We don't need to waste the boss. We don't need a switch card. Thank you. That was quite silly. Revenge Blast. 240 damage. I suppose they were kind of anticipating maybe heat energy or um, heal cards. We could actually do like heal uh, potion, Mumu cheese, lucky ice pop to heal those tiny damage bombs or even fresh water. Um, those are actually pretty new cards. Fresh water, lucky ice pop, honey, spicy curry as well. You have to burn your Pokemon though. And it, I think it only allows you to heal your active because you're burning your Pokemon. Okay. Now we got our third Volcanion ready to go, but if we kill this one, once we kill this Shaman, the next one is gonna be like in trouble. <laughs> so we need to save our boss. We need to hope they don't play a Marnie on the next turn because they can actually do uh, the four price draw with that one single Shaman. And we cannot knock out the Shaman on the next turn because we got no, not enough damage on, you know, with the dynamite tackle, dynamite tackle is only doing harder damage. Um, they may not pull out the V star in time though. They got one energy. They got that enough energy is already to do the revenge blast. So if they can evolve, that's the end. I don't think it's that difficult to evolve. If they have it prized though, because they're playing two different V stars, let's just hope. Fingers crossed, they're prizing. Uh, they got the V, the Shaman V star, the second copy prized. They may play like more than one, more than two copies, I don't know. What's gonna happen? If they don't play a Marty, oh, they actually did Gardenia, so we actually won the game already. They did Gardenia, we won already, even if they evolve, it's out of the question. They can't win anymore, because we got our boss for the Quicker Team knockout. Or even the Lilligan knockout, because we got 100 damage against a Grass type. Oh, we can't kill the Lilligan. My bad. We can't kill the Lilligan because it's actually 240 HP. <laughs> Thank God. Oh my goodness. That was quite silly. So, don't underestimate that ability. Quicker Tune is boosting all Grass Pokemons by 40. All Grass Pokemons HP. Okay, we did Dynamite Tackle for the win. It was a close shave because they didn't do a Marnie. Had they done like a V-Star Evolution and a Marnie at the same time, then we would have lost that game. Probably. We got our item cards to shuffle the deck though. If we shuffle the deck with an item and then draw with Greninja's ability, we may be able to draw back the boss and then do the final knockout with Dynamite Tackle on the Quicker Tune. So if you're playing Scoop Up Nets, it's actually uh, pretty strategic though. Because if you have Scoop Up Nets in your deck, you can choose to deny your opponent that one price knockout. If they have one price remaining, and they can't do enough damage for a V knockout, they, they are probably going to have to target your one price cards on the bench. And if you have only one one price Pokemons in play, you can actually do a Scoop It Up. You can Scoop Up Net. You can play Scoop Up Net to deny your opponent that one price. Buying you an extra turn for you to collect all of your remaining prizes. And the extra one turn is all it takes sometimes. Okay, right now we're up against a darkness box. I have no idea what they're playing, honestly. Um, I forgot. Okay, we got NTV ready to go. We're gonna do shady dealings. We got our magma basin early, but we got no switch cards, unfortunately. No volcano yet. So single strike NT has to show up 
as late as possible. If you get it as your first active, that would be uh, really bad, but not 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 too bad though, because you got your second copy still inside the deck. You can still retreat to the bench and save it for later, so it's not too bad. Um, we got a Bombastone in play, so if they do Inteleon Quick Shoot and then Rapid Flow, they can still kill uh, both the Abomasnow and the Entei, I suppose. Or even knock out the Greninja and something else. So Thievil only has 100 HP, unfortunately. It should really be 130 though, I mean, the ability is not even that powerful, honestly. It's just a really weird ability. I mean, if it's only two prize, if you're leaving that late to do something, might as well just prevent all effects of item cards as well. Like, only supporter cards. Why Why is that? Why is it so limiting? It should be prevent all effects of item and supporter cards. All effects of trainer cards done to your bench V Pokemon by your opponent's, uh, you know, by your opponent's, sorry, done to your, done to your bench Pokemon by your opponent's uh, trainer cards, right? Because that way you get to deny so much, but well, you only get to do that if they have two prize remaining. So it's it's not too bad a deal. Because they still can't play cross switcher, they can't play Pokemon Catcher, they can't toy catcher you on the bench. I mean it's just ridiculous. They're making so much they're creating so much rules now, so much confinement, so much shackles. Forcing us to play all the meta cards. Nothing but Arceus wins. Nothing but Reggie Gigas. I'm so sick of Reggies. I'm so sick of Reggies. Everybody play Reggies. It's so annoying. Like, do you have don't you have any brain space for other decks? Can't you build any other decks yourself? Are you really that stupid? It's just a deck for idiots. Nothing but Reggie's all day long, come on! Can't you build anything else? Are you really that stupid? I'm sorry guys, I just can't stand Reggie's. It's just so basic, it's so fucking basic. Okay, they scooped up the Drizzile. And then evolve again. There we go. Shady Giddings a second time. Pretty annoying. So we actually built a Shady Giddings deck for our last video. And I'm not proud about that. I'm sorry guys. I had no um, motivation for... Just because Ludicolo didn't work. You know, I wanted to do Mr. Rhyme with Ludicolo. But it was a shit show. It was like... It didn't work at all. It was an epic fail, so I decided, you know what, let's just play the meta. Let's just fucking play the meta and do Shady Dealings all day. Play Mr. Rhyme with Shady Dealings. Fuck the system. We're gonna be the system now, right? We're gonna be the fucking system. You want us to play meta cards? There you go. <laughs> We're not gonna do that every, every, every video, so don't worry, guys. Only that last video. So this one is actually a different combo now. We have no Shady. We have our Entei V though, which is a meta card. Magma Basin, Radiant Greninja. I mean, cards that you cannot live without. And then Thievo with Single Strike Entei, which is not doing too badly. Okay, they got um, another Urshifu on the bench. They got one Rapid Strike Energy attached already. They get to do Rapid Flow, their first one. If they do Cheryl, they can't do Rapid Flow. If they play Mustard for Flora Jazz, they can do Cheryl later by retreating to the bench. So Flora Jazz is an interesting play, definitely, for all Rapid Strike decks. 
But you don't see a lot of people playing that card. I love Floor Jess though. <laughs> I love it so much. But I've built so many decks with Floor Jess now, I don't think I should be building anymore. Because it's like so old now. Like my channel is filled with Floor Jess decks. I, I bet people are sick of that by now. Floor Jess, Floor Jess, Floor Jess. Okay, we got our basin for the bench. We got our knockout right now. So they killed our Obama Snow. They can't do that much damage anyway, so we, we're just gonna bench the Volcanion without the toughness boost. I don't think we need it. So, concealed cards. We got our first knockout right now. Our first VMAX knockout. We're just gonna collect our second V with the boss later. If they bench a Moltres, we can actually kill the Moltres. Bench another Ushifu. We don't need to kill the VMAX for the final for the final two prize. So Ushifu didn't heal, it didn't you know it didn't go to the bench, it just is giving us a free three prize this turn. They're giving us a free VMAX knockout. There we go. So even without Menifee, we are tanking a lot. We are, you know, having a lot of HP with that Cape of Toughness, Heat Energy, and they can't actually knock it out with one strike. I don't think it's that easy to even knock it out with two Rabbit Flows, but they got Inteleon though for the extra damage, for the extra damage counter placement. Dire Flame Wings, and they're gonna attack with Moltres. I don't think they have enough. They need energy switch. Are they gonna pass the turn doing not attacking? I think that's that might be what they're hitting for. There we go. No attack on the turn. We got our boss, that's the end. We got our boss to kill either the Moltres or even the Urshifu. We chose the Moltres because it has an energy attached. And they couldn't even do their first they couldn't do their next attack. One rapid flow and that's it. They got a Obama Snow knockout and nothing else. So right now we're up against Shadow Rider. I think this is a very this is the very interesting one. Shadow Rider with Gardevoir. I'm not sure though. We have it in one of the matchups in this video, but I'm not sure whether it's this one. There we go, it's this one. Gardevoir Shadow Rider is a very interesting one because they get to attack with a lot more damage because Gardevoir does a 60 base and the same effect as your Shadow Rider so 60 base is a lot more than 10 base obviously so Max Jice is actually weaker than Brainwave but Max Jice actually counts all, all psychic energy attached to all of your Pokemon though. Um, whereas with your Gardevoir, it only counts on itself, right? It only counts, it only multiplies the damage for each psychic energy attached to itself. So it's a bit different, but you know, there is a, a lot more base damage, I would say. You can do a one hit knockout much easier with Gardevoir, but I don't know. It's a bit difficult to pick back up the pace though. Once that Gardevoir gets killed, you have to reattach those energy. You have to think about your next one and then attach a lot more on the next one as well. All over again from scratch. Or maybe like invest uh, a lot on both. And then if one or the other gets knocked out, you got a lot more still on the next turn. Even you get to attach even more on the next turn with your Shining Arcana. And then, you know, pile back up those energies for a one hit knockout. So I suppose that's why Shadow Rider is kind of better because if you attack with Shadow, you can, you know, save your energies on your other Pokemons, save your energies on your Gardevoir and then, um, you know, do a one-hit knockout on the next, for your next attacker, for your next Shadow Rider, you get to do a one-hit knockout without having to recover the amount of energies attached to all of your Pokemons. You don't need to do a lot of work for your next attacker. 
unless if they do a boss even if they do a boss though you got a lot of energies attached to your active still so it's not too bad uh, especially if you spread your energy so if you're smart you would be spreading your energies from the get-go not concentrating to one Gardevoir but to spread it around if you want to be attacking with Shadow if you want to be doing a uh, Gardevoir for the for the main attacker then you should be concentrating those energies for Brainwave it really depends on which is the best move I don't know I have no idea because you only have that many spaces you only have that much space for that many energies because you're playing so many stage 2 and a VMAX attacker at that I don't think you have that many energies uh, allowed if you're playing enough a draw support uh, supporter card rare candies like stage 2 support draw support it requires a lot and bench support as well uh, set up you know early setup you need your VIP pass quick level ball Sonia capture stuff like that incense and that means you don't have the space for that many energies so I think I'm just gonna end the voiceover right here and leave you guys to focus on the game, enjoy the music, and hope you guys enjoy this new combo featuring our Thiva from Astro Radiance and Chilling Rain Volcania. So that's all for this one and we'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day and bye for now lovely people! Enjoy your life!
Thank you.